Hey, welcome. I'm John Zadar. I've got something I want to share with you today. And the reason I want to share it with you is it is a stock that's under the radar, but about to break into a whole new industry, if you will. Now, this is Global Hemp Group, GBPHF. You've probably never heard of them. I had neither, and I've been in the cannabis sector for three years. This company only works with hemp, not marijuana. The difference is, is that hemp is like, well, the impotent cousin to marijuana. It doesn't have the THC in it to get you high. You use hemp for more applications such as textiles and fabrics, fuels, plastic, stuff like that. And the company, when they first came out, they were only interested in the consumer aspect of it. They were cultivating hemp, they were extracting the cannabinoids, they were going to sell the oils and use them as food additives. And to that end, they were making some joint ventures and deals with other companies. They uh, made some small investments and at the time they also created a research and development office. And this office was to create intellectual property, new ways to use hemp. And in this time, they made a decision to pivot. Now, I want to share what they are doing because they are moving into home construction with hemp. Now, there are some companies out there doing this. None of them are public. This is the first public company to move into this realm. And this is a Canadian company. They are working out of Colorado. Now, let me give you a general idea of what their plan is. It is a 10-year plan and it is going to make a lot of money because it's very timely, it's very eco-friendly, very green, very cost-efficient. I'm excited about this. So here's the plan. In Colorado and in other areas of the country, they have what is called haze. This is a hemp agro-industrial zone. These are areas set aside for manufacturers, cultivation, things as such to do with hemp. Well, this company got a license, it got approved. They now have the rights to the Hayes Zone in Colorado. They are creating what you might think of as a showcase campus. Now, this is very interesting. They've already been growing hemp. They've got hemp in a few areas, including Colorado. Next to all the hemp that they're growing, they are building a factory. Their R&D will be there and their other offices will be there. And right next to that, alongside it, will be a community of homes all built with hemp. Not just the home's exteriors, but lots of innovative ways. They are going to be collaborating, sort of an incubator, if you will, bringing in other companies that have green technologies that can be added into new home construction. This is exciting. We don't even know how far this is going to go. Now, the grand thing about this is, is that it's not about what I just told you. All of that is for one purpose, to showcase it to the rest of the country and world. This is supposed to be duplicatable. This is supposed to be like a franchise. They want to create a model community, not just a model home, a model community and sell it to other areas of the country and world. Now, the big deal about this is, is the factory is going to make the products that all the homes are built with. And there's lots of different products that can be made with hemp, starting with hempcrete. Now, regardless what the product is that they're making, the process to get there starts the same. They harvest what they cultivate. And the first thing they have to do is what is called decortification, break down the hemp into small enough pieces so it can be used for whatever. And we do not use the entire plant only the center of the plant, the herd, the core of the plant is used. Once it is shredded down into small enough pieces, it is then mixed with lime and water. This is all brought together into a paste, which is either formed into a shell that is shaped with wood, or it can actually be blown on, or it can be spread on with tools and instruments. The unique thing about it is, is that after it dries, it is totally workable. You can drill into it. You can hammer into it. 
You can put your pipes and your electrical boxes into it. It works interior and exterior. You can actually color it as well. You can add color to it if you want to use it as a finished product or you can put a base coat of stucco or plaster on top of it and it seals on it very, very well. You can pre-make bricks. You can form your blocks into any size you want. Some come with pre-made knobs already on them so they lock together or depending on what shapes you're making, you can put the knobs in indiscriminately where you need them. Any shape, any size brick can be made. Very big bricks can be made and you would be surprised at how light they are. They are very aerated. These bricks actually breathe. They will let air pass through them in a very slow way like insulation. But you can also use the hemp to create prefab walls. Interior, exterior, one wall, drop in place, connect to another wall, window holes included. This is so durable and lightweight that you can use it on your roof and you can nail your shingles into it. As I was saying, hempcrete has a lot of special features. When you mix the hemp and the lime and the water together, you end up with a very strong, lightweight, breathable brick. It's very energy efficient. The fact of the matter is, is that for every inch of hempcrete, you will receive an R value of 2.08, which means 12 inch brick will give you a 25 R rating without any insulation. And here is something else. It lasts for hundreds of years. Mildew resistant, flame resistant, water resistant, pest resistant, it's not going to rot away. Imagine if they had built the castles in Scotland with these. And of course, it is naturally non-toxic. There are no fumes that are going to escape from it and cause any damage at any time. Very safe. Now I told you it was flame resistant. Here's a short video showing you 10 minutes of a torch blasting the brick. Now remember, this is made out of hemp and lime and water. That's it. Well, after 10 minutes, all we got was a little bit of singe on the top and just a wee bit of burn down. But before you think that hemp can only be used to make hempcrete and mud pies, consider this. For every wood product that is on the market, hemp has got a matching product. There is OBS boards, particle boards made for hemp. There are chip boards and ply boards made with hemp. We even have hardwood made of hemp. And are you ready for this? Hemp hardwood is twice as hard as natural hardwood. And for the record, all the pictures you have seen in this video are hemp products. I have not drawn any generic pictures just to throw up here. Now I told you that the bricks have insulation factor. The hemp itself insulates. Well, they make hemp insulation as well. It comes in rolls, it comes in bats, it comes in sprays. Hemp has lots of things it can be used for. And all of these homes, all have been made with hemp. Some are traditional, nice square edges, big tall farmhouses. Some are quite creative and some go beyond the norm. Now you can see there's lots of different types of building materials that can be made from hemp and I just scratched the surface and they have got a research and development department that is working on even better ideas and better ways to use them. Did you know that those hempcrete bricks actually draw pollutants and bacteria out of the air, not just carbon. So it's cleaning air outside and inside. That's got to be good. Now let's cover some facts that are happening right now because one of the most important things here is that they must have water. 
all of this area needs water for irrigation, for the manufacturing, for the homes, obviously. So the first thing they did was to acquire water rights. And the water rights actually gave them assets, a lot of assets that they're going to be able to build on without going into debt. Let me show you. So this was the big ticket. They needed to have water. They made a deal with this company, Western Sierra Resource, a while back, and they attained 50% of the company at that time. Now they got the other 50%. So they own the whole company, and this is a public company. Their ticker is WS rc now let's just take a look at their definition of what they are western sierra resource corporation is a multifaceted natural resource company focused on applying its 40 million dollars in water assets to beneficial use for irrigation and cultivation of high value industrial hemp with which to manufacture green building products for construction of affordable homes this has led to the company's involvement in and acquisition of associated green technologies for construction, energy, water conservation, and alternative and renewable off-grid power sources. And the rest says that they're going to continue doing what they've always done, and that's mining. They mine for gold and silver. They've just recently gotten into renewable, well, I say recently because they've been around a very long time. So in the last 15 years, they've been working on this. And that is mentioned here in the news. The transaction provides Global Hemp with control of WSRC's extensive existing water infrastructure developed over the last 15 years and currently valued of over $40 million. The availability of these water assets is the key resource in the development of the Colorado Haze, which is being developed under the banner of Innovative Hemp Technologies, IHT, another wholly owned subsidiary for Global Hemp Group. Now, IHT's core objective is to develop green and affordable homes in the planned area, utilizing hemp-based construction materials to meet a very strong demand for housing in that local area. So between Global Hemp and uh, Western Sierra, there's going to be a lot of little companies that are going to be swallowed up and brought in. And each one of these companies has a specialty, a green technology, and they're going to retain some of their rights too. They're going to make profits. So there's going to be multiple streams of revenue coming from each one of these companies because they're all going to add value to these newly created, constructed homes and everybody is going to benefit and that's the whole purpose of this company he wants lots of companies working together so lots of companies make money and the consumer gets all the benefits now let's take a look at the properties that they've just recently gotten here just for that so just recently the company on june 22nd closed a deal to acquire an industrial property. They received 44 acres for $1.4 million, and this is gonna be used for multiple purposes. This is gonna be for their factory. This is where they're gonna manufacture whatever type of hemp building materials they construct. Now, they are very excited about this because this is where they're going to launch from. And as it says here, the Colorado Haze is an exciting opportunity to implement the company's vision of building an entire green and sustainable community utilizing and showcasing hemp based building materials as well as all those new green technologies that they're going to be incorporating. The other piece of land they got was closed on May 17th, 2021. This was for their residential property. It says down here that they purchased approximately 175 net acres of annexed and entitled land, which will serve as the catalyst for the company's initial planned unit development of green and affordable homes, as well as irrigated industrial hemp cultivation. Now down here, they go into a little bit more detail. Global Hemp Group is preparing to build hemp-based sustainable city from the ground up, strategically located in a beautiful part of northwestern Colorado, a location in great need of affordable workforce housing. Remember, all of these housing and the manufacturing, 
all need personnel to do the work. This is going to create a lot of jobs for cultivation and farming, manufacturing, R&D, construction, electricians. This is going to be good for the community. The project will utilize hemp from its eco-friendly farm processed in a carbon neutral negative building materials at its nearby industrial campus. The Hemp Tech campus will serve as the incubator for the development and the production of new hemp tech intellectual property and will also serve to showcase best in class carbon reducing building technologies. A lot of words there folks but you know what he's saying. We're bringing you the best and the newest to impress. This unique initiative will be an open invitation to collaborate with leading hemp tech R&D scientists, academic partners, community stakeholders, and hemp tech startup entrepreneurs from around the world. Our ultimate corporate vision is contributing towards the development of a zero carbon footprint living environment supportive of a healthy community model for the future. In order to achieve this vision, the company will become a leader in the establishment of a gold standard in hemp tech building sciences. We intend to prove this model out, then help others worldwide do the same by securing strategic vertical integration from growing hemp and processing it into various industrial value-added marketable products for the massive untapped market. You got to remember, they do know how to extract. They do know how to make CBD oil. They can do a lot of things now. The door is open for them. We don't know how many directions they're going to go, but we do know this. Housing with eco-friendly building materials, that's going to be big, especially since nobody's doing it. And when you showcase it, when you're not just building homes, when you're not just trying to make money off the houses themselves, and you're selling the concept with patent rights and royalties, and you're making all the goods that they're going to use to put into the houses, they've got a good thing going here. And then just today, the company went ahead and made its largest purchase yet. They did 664 more acres over in Hayden. It's an adjacent parcel on top of the 219 acres they already have bought that we were just talking about. So now they've got a total of 874 acres. Now this acreage, 664 of it, is for cultivation. This is to grow as much hemp as they possibly can if they want to build as many houses as they want to build. Now this particular deal has been in the works for a long time, since the early 2000s, almost 20 years, and it just closed. It is a big deal. All right, over here I took a screenshot of the brochure. You can see what they have planned for their PUD. Uh, affordable housing is an approved beneficial use for the water, approved for 2,969 residential dwellings. 40 years of affordable housing shortage, 1,000 acres identified will be acquired in 2021. The average house size will be 1,500 square feet and the target selling price $275,000 to $475,000 each. Now it says down here, development of the Colorado Hayes is expected to create shareholder value through the creation of real estate and water assets, along with the incremental introduction of multiple revenue streams that are expected to be generated from the various phases of the project. Uh, these are points that they bulleted to show you how much they are now going to be worth based on the new water rights that they've gotten. It says here, opportunity to develop and expand existing assets, which is 40 million, to over 250 million of merchantable value during the next five years. Operating to establish planned unit PUD to include up to 2,969 green affordable homes. That is a lot of houses. Construction of homes projected to average annual net revenue of 6 million. 207,000 for each filing of 100 single family homes. 30 filings totals 186 million in net revenue possible. Irrigation of dry farmland averages a land value increase of up to 100% using the company's existing expanded infrastructure. In other words, just putting water on the land has made it twice as valuable. 
Uh, they project that cultivation and processing of industrial hemp is projected to average annual net revenue of 10 million per year based on a thousand acres when they are up to scale. Incremental annual revenue increases may total up to 52 million by the fifth year of scaled production of 5,000 acres. There is virtually no limit to this opportunity given present and growing offtake demand for thousands of known hemp based products, thousands of additional acres available for protection within the service area of the company's water assets, and the huge storage capacity of aquifers underlying the project footprint. They're set up, folks. Water, land, license they have the technology they know what they're doing and they have just gotten a new man into their R&D who's bringing some good stuff to the table now the company's very excited about their research and development department this is where it's all going to happen you have to have the IP the intellectual property that you can protect that you can create that you can manufacture this is where it all lies. So they brought in this new man, Professor Victor M. Castaño, PhD, a recognized leader in several areas of applied science and technology. He will head the division, and he and his team bring to GHG an amazing wealth of knowledge. Professor Castaño has published extensively, including five books, 25 patents, and has received over 14,500 citations in the last few years. He is one of the most cited Latin American scientists in the area. So this man has got a lot of uh, ideas and from what I understand he likes to think outside of the box now down here what does it say environmentally friendly construction materials 30 years of experience in the development of novel construction materials from natural resources particularly agricultural waste or byproducts including any fiber containing plants so it sounds like the man knows exactly where he should be and that's here he's got it and we've got it and we've got him and as I said they have expanded down into Mexico now they have opened up an office down there and they're gonna start or try to start cultivating hemp down there year-round now something else we need to look at and is pretty decent actually is their share structure it is not bad at all so here we are at the otcmarkets.com. That is the name of the site. This is the legal housing site for FINRA, for SEC. This is where all the filings go. 10Ks, 10Qs, 8Ks, S1s, all of them. They all go here. This is the only legitimate authorized site for legal filing. So if you're looking anywhere else, you're wasting your time. This is where you come. Now we're looking at the share count here for GBHPF, Global Hemp Group. Now this is a Canadian company. Uh, they don't have to list how many authorized shares they have. I don't know why. So they put unlimited, but I assure you, it's not unlimited. Uh, they're authorized shares. They've got about 300 million total on the shelf. That's what they have for sale for everybody. Management, insiders, and you and me. Just between me and you every single day, we're trading about 191 million on the open market. That's the float. That's a good float. Now, I don't care if you're on the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, or the OTC. That is a good float. Now, this is a OTC QB stock. That is a better stock. Three tiers on the OTC. Pink are good. QB are better. QX are the best. QB is where pinks go when they want to uplist and show their better foot. They have to start autoing auditing their financials they have to present more information and become more transparent so when you want to put your best foot forward you do it on the QB and that draws in a lot of new investors now the price is pretty decent right now but how do you know if it's a good price unless you compare it to what it's been and where it looks like it's going so let's go take a look at that chart so I've jumped over here to TOS, Thinkorswim's trading platform. This comes from TD Ameritrade. It's absolutely free. If you have an account with them, can't rent it, lease it, buy it, you must have an account with TD. You don't have to trade with them, but you got to open an account and you can get this. You can screen uh, stocks, you can chart them, you can make watch lists, keep up at news. This does a lot and it's free. All right, we are looking at GBHPF, Global Hemp. We are looking at four hours, six months. 
right here this first jump here is just in the beginning of January and I got to tell you I've looked at the news I've looked at the filings and I can truly find no correlation for why it jumped from down here all the way up here which started a whole new level for itself I mean I know it went up this is the stimulus month February we got a lot of money from the government and a lot of people were investing trying to hit some home runs and after February it all fell down but as you can see if you draw a line from our price across to here we jumped up now it's not a big jump if you discount all this and where it came back down this jump right here did cause something but I can't find what happened now this one here well this is easier to understand this was when they closed their property the first big purchase they made in Hayden people were excited about this this showed everybody that now we're on track now that we got the land we can build we can plant so people were excited here but again you can see it came back down so right now we are sitting at an average that has been here for quite a long time hasn't gone up hasn't gone down really it's just kind of meandering across the board you can see our MACD has been under the signal line a little weak shows that it wants to come up right about now but again it's very difficult to tell if this has got any momentum to carry it we probably need a big piece of news to get this thing to launch really catch somebody's eye uh, we are looking at the four hour right now so let's come in just so we can get a view of what's going on this last week as you can see there's really not a lot going on she's under the radar nobody's paying attention to her very little volume whatsoever we hit a low here and I think that's important you can see it was going sideways here went up then boom crashed down here to this bottom and what did it do zoom 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 up to that three two five so just like that it jumped hitting that low bubble remember low bubbles if the stock is worth anything bounce you hit that low bubble it will go back up if the company's got value people are watching these low bubbles because it's a sale so they grab up as much as they can get so even though you don't see any volume here not really you can see that the price was kicking up so that is where we sit right now and that high is pretty close to where she's at right now we're at 323 and that was at 325 so this is a good deal in my opinion I think this company is gonna be big I think they're gonna make a lot of money I think this is an unbelievable price right now we're looking at pretty much lows that went back to the beginning of the year I like the way this is set up right now and I think it's gonna be really good but that's my opinion you be sure to look look at the information look at the charts look at your finances you know best what's best for you so this company is on the verge they've got everything they need there's nothing else water property licenses concept already growing hemp they're gonna take off and when you think about this each house 1500 feet requires 3.5 acres of land of hemp to make it well if, if you're gonna build 2,000 homes you're gonna need 7,000 acres of hemp and when he said that they were going to make what 52 million off of every 1,000 acres of hemp well just start doing the math it just starts getting humongous just gigantic and the great thing is is that hemp is easily growable constantly grows you can grow it very cheap very easy especially hemp and not marijuana it doesn't take as much time or money I'm excited about this company they're gonna create a lot of jobs they're gonna create a lot of decent homes they're gonna help clean the air do you know those 3.5 acres of hemp sequester 60 tons of co2 for each home and then the homes themselves are pulling in co2 it's just amazing and the thing is is that this isn't just for them they're building a showcase they want to show this to the world so that it can be duplicated that's the whole reason they're creating a process so like McDonald's you go into any McDonald's it's the same exact burger made the same way looks the same way tastes the same way that's what they want these homes to be and it will be a franchise sort of thing and across the country it will go I'm excited 
I think this is really a good idea. Lots of little incubator companies gonna come in. We're gonna see new technologies, kind of exciting. You know what? I think I'm gonna get in this. How about you?